We now have quarterback coach Mario Verdusco. I will give it the first question to Aaron Sorensen. Hello, varsity. Hey, coach. Uh, I'm going to start Aaron. with. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Hi. I'm <laughs> good. How are you? Sorry for the delay. Oh, you're fine. Um, you know, without fans, it's going to be a quiet stadium that actually can be a benefit for an offense on the road. But with a quiet stadium, that also means there's a benefit to a home defense. So when you're thinking about the snap count, um, can you share a little bit of how you may be preparing for that, whether it's mixing things up, changing the rhythm, the cadence, how you work with that in practice? No, it, it, it's going to stay fairly simple for us. You know, simple's good. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be very many changes with that at all in terms of the snap count procedures. Um, aside from that, I just told the guys, you know, there's going to be a uh, certain sense we got to bring our own juice, you know. <laughs> there's nobody in the stands and you got to do it on your own. And we've all been through those sorts, of, those sorts of games, even when there's stands on the field and you might be playing an opponent who you might have overmatched and is not doing very well. So you go to their place and they don't have very many fans in the stands. So you always tell your team, bring your own juice. Kale okay, Canoe with Parker Gabriel and Kendrick Star. Hey, Mario, how are you? Hi, Parker, how are you? Doing well. Um, you look depressed. You've you said right? in the well, I'm, I'm not stressed. I'm not stressed. Not no, depressed. How about you? You look relaxed. Um, you, you've said in the past, and, and Scott has said in the past, that you, you don't typically favor a you know two-quarterback system, whatever that means. Are you in a position where you have two guys that you'd like to get regular playing time and I guess how do you how do you walk that balance when you have players you really like in, in both Adrian and Luke oh I don't I don't know about that that's going to be ultimately frosty decision you know um, as relate to how that all gets played out but I think you'd love to have as many good quarterbacks in your room as possible that you feel good about that you feel can go into a game if they have some game prep and um, win a game for you um, so yeah, feel good about Adrian and Luke both. Okay, we'll go to Brian Christofferson, 24-7 Sports. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Hi, Brian. Um, quick question about McCaffrey. What, when you look back at his first year here, what, was, what are one or two things where you thought he had to make the biggest, uh, the biggest strides in uh, coming into this season, and how have you seen him do that? Um, stroke, thrust on the ball. You know, he's worked hard on that in the offseason. And it's showing up with um, the way he's flinging it around right now. Um, some small issue feet things, but nothing major. He's cleaned those up. Uh, do we have more work to do? <laughs> Absolutely. So there's still things we're going on. But I would, to answer your question, uh, it would probably be thrust on the ball, you know, just in terms of that effectiveness and efficiency with it. A quick one on Logan, too. Where where do you see him at? Uh, how, how does he fit in here in this kind of weird, disjointed offseason? Yeah, um, very similar to how when, when Luke came in. His issue particularly was uh, he just didn't get very many reps in spring, right? You know? So we've done uh, as good a job as we possibly can getting him caught up with the experience part of it. But like Luke, he had some things that he needed to get cleaned up. And because of the delay, you know, I think in a kind of a weird, goofy-ass way, he's probably further ahead than he normally would be. Excuse my French. Okay, we'll go with Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Hey, Mario, good morning. Hi, Evan. Hey, I'm just curious, as you uh, evaluate Luke and Adrian specifically in this thing, how much would you say the experience gap has closed between those two from last year? And how big a factor is that as you evaluate these guys moving forward? Oh, I don't think it's as probably big as maybe it would be if rep, if Lucas had never got any, got any reps, number one, number two, uh, Lucas has got a boatload of reps with both the uh, twos and the ones during camp. So I wouldn't say that's a, a, a huge, a huge uh, factor to answer your question. Okay, next we'll go to Derek Pearson, Hale Varsity. Hey Mario, how are you? Hey, what's up? I like the glasses, man. 
Thank you. I like yours too. <laughs> um, so everybody all the time talks about how competition brings out the best in players. You've got two guys and Adrian and Luke that are battling with each other this off season for, for each guy. So for Adrian, is there a specific area that Luke excels in that you see pushing Adrian? And then is there a specific area that Adrian excels in that you see pushing Luke? No, not, not really. They're very similar in a lot of ways in terms of their skill set. Okay, we'll go to Mitch Schumann from The Athletic. Hey Mario, <clears throat> good to Hi, see Mitch. you. Hello. Um, last time we saw you guys play, there were a handful of uh, reps where um, Adrian and Luke were on the field at the same time. Um, hypothetically, what uh, you know? What kind of stress can you guys add to a defense if uh, if that's a, an option that you choose to go uh, with more in uh, in twenty twenty? You would probably know as well as anybody that can create stress for a defense, particularly when both of the young guys are capable of running it and throwing it. You know, um, how much of that scheme wise, Coach Frost wants to do that would be best a question for him. But I certainly think when you have that availability uh it certainly helps you it did help the browns even though it wasn't a quarterback throwing the ball to our guy in the end zone but yeah it it, it uh it's pretty dangerous have you guys okay, well, have you guys spent any time spent any time this offseason you know studying whether it's nfl or other colleges and just the way they've been creative and using uh um not necessarily multiple quarterbacks but just uh weapons uh the multiple weapons, uh, you know, in, along the lines of what Mario and, and Luke can bring. Um, Adrian, you mean? Sorry, uh, Adrian and Luke, yeah. You're not I, I don't know if I can play any. I, I doubt that I'd be very, very good. But Mitch, as, uh, Coach Luke is the, the consummate ball guy. Seriously, man, he's, he's all about it. So uh, I'm certain that he's uh, delved in that piece of the puzzle, you know, and what he can do. Uh, in terms of finding uh, offenses or plays or what have you, uh, having two quarterbacks on the field. You know, I'm sure he's done a lot of research in that area, and then it'll be dependent upon him and Coach Frost, the, him and Coach Frost getting together to figure how much they want to do. Okay, next we'll go to Connor Habner. Hey, Coach. Um, Hi, Coach Connor. Frost. Coach Frost and Coach uh, Lubick have talked a lot about simplifying things for your guys. How does that kind of manifest itself um, on the field? Have you noticed any changes or is there any differences in the way you guys go about your business with the new offensive coordinator and that type of philosophy? Yeah, it, it's more simple in a variety of ways in terms of uh, where you might start your progression and so on and so forth with regards to that. Um, so, the other piece of the puzzle is Coach Lubes has done a great job figuring out uh, the, the base plays and even some of the third down uh, situation offense, pass offense stuff that, that we've been able to rehearse over and over and over and over. So at least uh, for us right now in terms of what we've gone through, it's, it's been really good. How it's going to translate into competition, we're going to find out. But I feel real good about it right now. Next, go to Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Mario. Um, so I'm curious about the, with everybody, you know, getting an extra year of eligibility in this year, you know, quote unquote, not counting for your eligibility clock. What does that mean for, for Logan um, and maybe getting him uh, into a, a game at some point? And then I'm also curious um, how far Matt Masker has come at this point point and where your comfort level is with him as a guy, you know, depth in your room too. Well, first off, with regards to Logan, um, it, it's a great opportunity for him, you know, and he, he would love to play without losing any eligibility. So he's, he's ready for that. Uh, with regards to his playbook test and all that craziness, he, he's, he, he's sharp as a tack. So he's ready to go in terms of that. So if we decide to put him in, in a game, Frosty wants to, Lubes wants to, uh, he knows what he's doing, you know. So that would be, that, that would be tremendous for him, you know. Uh, and then 
knowing that you're not going to lose any eligibility. With regards to Matty Masker, Masker's a, just a tough-ass Nebraska kid, got a great gun, uh, he's got pretty good wheels. So we, we feel confident with him that if he had to come in and, and do X, Y, Z, then that's exactly what he would do. Next, we'll go to Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Oh, I, that was, that was oh, sorry. my question. Sorry, Parker, my fault. I'm good. I'm good. There's two Sh Parkers. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Callahan, right, Nebraska Online. <laughs> uh, hey, Coach Verdusco. Um, just Coach Frost said the other night uh, on his radio show that you guys will hold a pretty good sized scrimmage on Saturday in the stadium. Uh, with just limited time, limited contact, how big will something like Saturday's scrimmage be in, in making those final evaluations? Oh, just probably no different in a lot of ways just from day-to-day -day practice. You know, it, it's going to be those same sorts of pressures, they, those same sorts of situations that come up. And um, it'll be a factor, but I don't know if it'll be the overall major factor. And then I wanted to ask you, how did you – how did you manage um, just the emotions of this whole off season of not knowing when or if you were going to play? I mean, were there some dark <laughs> days and up and down days? I mean, uh, I'm sure it was quite a roller coaster for all the coaches. Me personally, you asking? Yeah. yeah. I, I, from my own, my, my own personal standpoint, I, I just looked at it that we're playing. And I worked and I prepared as if we were going to play. Uh, I told the quarterbacks to, to think of it that way, that way. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. If they delay us, they delay us. But, I, I, yeah, it, it gets to be a kind of a pain in the ass, you know, when you get delayed over and over. But uh, to be able to fight that, that, that's how I dealt with it, uh, Sean, to be honest. I just, we're going to play. And if it gets delayed, then we're going to play the next week. If it gets delayed again, then whenever they tell us we're going to play, we're going to play, and we're going to prepare. Okay, we'll finish up this round of questions with Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Mario, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Sam. How are you? Good. I, I'm keeping my screen dark because I don't want you to tell me I'm depressed. Oh, um, man. Come on, man. Let me see that lovely face, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know I do. <laughs> um, so you're, um, I, this is kind of a follow-up question to what Sean was asking. You know, you, you're, a, you're a very hands-on and very, you know, you coach in a very personal way with your quarterbacks. And I'm just curious how the coronavirus may have changed that a little bit. I know that you're used to giving, giving the guys, for example, their tests in your house and all that other stuff. How, how has that changed? And more importantly, quarterback is a position where if you lose a bunch of guys um, because of contact tracing or whatever, uh, it's a problem. So how, how do you kind of navigate how you're coaching them so that if one guy tests, maybe another guy doesn't get it, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh... First off, I'm a hugger, so I, I couldn't hug him as often as I'd like to. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, Jared Lambrick and, and uh, Simsy and the guys have done a great job with handling that and getting some different rooms and so on and so on and so forth, right? Um, which was interesting for us when we got back to the quarterback room. I put names on each of their chairs um, so that they were sitting in the same chair all the time, making sure they were spread out. When I get here in the morning, I get those, uh, I don't know, what are they, Clorox disinfectant towels, whatever the hell they are. So I go in every morning and I, and I wipe down their chairs, the back of the chair, where they're sitting, the keyboard, and all of that sort of stuff uh, to make certain that we're as um, self-contained in this bubble and clean as possible. I hope that answers your question. It does. it does. Yeah. Yeah. You feel, has it otherwise been normal? Like when you're coaching them out on the field? Uh, that piece of the puzzle has a a absolutely. Um, I, I haven't really kind of noticed anything with regards to the impact of COVID when I'm out on the field, on the field coaching. Most of it has been in the building itself. And even before there was a point in time where they just, they were not allowed up on our floor which was kind of weird for me not to see him as much as I usually do. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been interesting. As you pointed out, you certainly don't want to lose your quarterbacks, uh, nor any person on the team for that matter, but you certainly are, are cautious about that and making certain you're doing everything to keep those cats healthy. 
Okay, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick break, and we'll go for players here shortly.